I'm joined now by Dr. David Suzuki, co-founder of the David Suzuki Foundation. Now, we just heard you speak about how the environment has an impact on who we are. What do you feel like are some of the biggest influences on our health from the outside environment? Well, I think it's the way that we use these various elements. You know, I talk about air, water, food that comes from the soil. And uh, we're using the very things that keep us alive, air, water, and soil, as a garbage can. So we dump literally millions of pounds of toxic, very highly toxic chemicals into air, water, and soil. And it's kind of like we think that if you, you know, let it go into the water or the air, it'll be diluted away. But we're constantly drinking the water and breathing the air and filtering out whatever is in it. So uh, it's not an accident then that we have steadily rising health problems. I think the, one of the canaries in the coal mine is asthma. When I was a kid, asthma was considered a very rare disease. But now, you know, uh, gosh, 15% of children in Canada are born with asthma. So uh, to me, the obvious thing is it's what you're doing to the air. You also mentioned that we can't have healthy people without a healthy environment. What are some of the things that you think we can do to improve the environment and then have healthier people? Well, I think from the uh, standpoint of individuals, we can stop using so much energy. So that means stop using a car as much as we do. Try to get an energy efficient vehicle if you're going to. Take up biking. I mean, I've found biking is just a joy to, to get back to. But, but we got to take care of, as we take care of the planet, we take care of ourselves. It, the human body was made to move. Exercise is, I always say, exercise is the best medicine that we have. If you look at the statistics on the incidence of Alzheimer's, cancer, diabetes, stroke, uh, heart disease, the one factor that reduces your risk in all of these is exercise. So we're going against what our body needs in the way that we live. If you make your home more energy efficient, you save money and you use less greenhouse gas. So there, uh, what we eat is a very in interesting. Meat is a very expensive uh, food in terms of the environment. So it takes a lot of water to grow meat. It takes a lot of uh, energy to grow meat. So if you, uh, we suggest uh, don't eat meat one day a week. And that, if enough people do that, has a significant impact on the environment. So it's the way that we live on the planet. We should live in a way that makes more sense from the standpoint of your own body, but that makes sense from the standpoint of the, the planet. What are your hopes for the planet in the future? Well, my, my hope would be that we as a society recognize that it is the environment that keeps us alive and healthy. So that we elevate the air, water, soil up to our highest priority. Instead, right now, the, the Minister of the Environment, he's got one tiny department. So we think, oh, well, the environment is just a small segment. The Minister of Finance is the most important. But we should have, you know, an understanding that air, water, and land, that's what keeps us alive. And so whatever we do, whether you're the Minister of Finance, Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Energy, always have to go back to air, water, soil. What what is the impact? So that really is what environmentalists call a paradigm shift. You see, right now, we live be in a world that we think we're in control and that our needs, our economic needs, dominate everything else. But there's another way of looking at it, which is to say, oh, we're a part of nature. And as long as nature is healthy and vibrant, then we will benefit. So we need to make that fundamental shift. Well, thank you for taking the time to stop by and talk. My pleasure.